Welcome to this QuickBooks 2021 tutorial for beginners on how to set up a non-inventory part in QuickBooks. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University and thank you so much for joining me. Hey, before we get started, uh, I want to let you know, head over to the QuickBooks University at QB university.org. Got a lot of great information there. Also got a full uh, training set on QuickBooks where I also answer your uh, QuickBooks questions. All right, so let's get started here. So in QuickBooks, we're in QuickBooks Desktop, and uh, there are items. Items in QuickBooks basically are almost like a database. You know, you put items on your invoices, you put them on your purchase orders, your sales receipts, etc. Items kind of drive uh, where things end up going on your financial statements. So, for example, if you bill for something, whether it's a service, you know, um, um, uh, inventory that you sell, you're going to set those up as an item. And then when you go to do an invoice or a sales receipt or a purchase order, whatever that is, you're going to specify on the face of that, that this is an item that I am selling. And once you set it up in the item list, it's going to automatically have the price, et cetera. Okay. So we're going to walk through an item that is called a non inventory part. All right. So first of all, what we're going to do, we're going to go up to the edit, uh, the list drop down menu, and you're going to see there's an option here that says item list. So we're going to go ahead and click this. Now you can see in the sample company file, there are a ton of things set up. Now, if you first set up a QuickBooks file, there's going to be nothing in here. And the reason there's nothing is because every business is different. You're going to be charging for certain things. You're going to have different rates. And so you're going to have to go through and set up all of your items. Now, I always tell people, look, when you're first starting out in a business, you're not going to know every single little thing to put in this item list. You might, you might have like a, a pricing list or a service list and what you're going to bill. And you can go ahead and set those up. That's totally fine. But this will also get built over time. So as you are doing new work and as you're, you know, selling things, you're going to be setting up new items within QuickBooks. So it's okay that you don't have it all on the front end. Perfect. You're going to build it over time. Okay. So in this uh, list here, you'll see here that we have some service items. We have some inventory and we have non-inventory parts. Then we have a whole bunch of other ones that we're not going to touch on in this video, but we have other charges, subtotal groups, payments, sales tax, etc. Okay, so a non-inventory part. Now, let me tell you a little bit about what a non-inventory part is first. Now, this is something that, uh, exactly as it sounds, is something that you don't keep in stock, all right? Or you may keep small amounts in stock that you use on various jobs, uh, but you're not really separately billing for these items. You're not tracking these items in inventory, and you don't have to order a bunch more to restock, etc. So... Um, it could be, in general, these are things It could be like maybe some nuts and bolts that you use on all sorts of different jobs, and you don't necessarily inventory them because it's a small amount. Uh, it could be that items you buy specifically for jobs that you're going to bill for. So in the sample company file, you see here that they've got lumber, they've got trim, decking lumber, and rough lumber. These are non-inventory parts, most likely because they're not putting this in stock to sell to people because this is a construction company, but instead they will order it for a specific job. So if somebody comes to them and says, Hey, we want you to build a deck. Well, they're going to go out and buy decking lumber, and then they're going to invoice this to the customer. And so they set it up as a non inventory part. Okay. So let me show you the setup of these. So we're going to go down here. You can do this one of two ways. You can click this and say new, or you can simply right click anywhere and say new. So the item setup screen comes up and you see you've got to choose first what type of item is this. In this case, we are choosing a non inventory part. Okay, so first you want to say what is the item name or the number. So in this case, let's think of something that we want to put in here, we're going to say uh, bolts. You know, I don't know. It's not very creative, but we'll say bolts. Sub item. You can make this a sub item of something else. So you can see here, for example, trim decking and rough are sub items of lumber. Bolts. Uh, this could be a main category and I could have sub items of different types of bolts maybe that I purchase for different jobs. In this case, we're going to leave it just as bolts. Now, if you have a manufacturer's part number, maybe there's a place you buy this specifically and you always use this specific part number. You can put that in here, but it's not necessary. Unit of measure. 
All right, again, this is something you don't necessarily need to worry about. Now, you, you may have to worry about this if you're buying whole boxes of this stuff and maybe there's a thousand in each one and you're buying, you know, a couple boxes and you wanna make sure that you know how many you're getting. But in this case, not necessary. Now down here, this is gonna be the important part. Okay, so there's this box here that says this item's used in assemblies or is purchased for a specific customer job. This is also oftentimes, uh, this is the most often time you're gonna see this is when you're purchasing this for a specific job or a specific customer. Now, if you're not, you just leave this blank. So let's say it's the situation where you're buying a ton of bolts and you might use them on a hundred different jobs. All right, and you're not really tracking, you're not charging them for the bolts. You're just using them on all sorts of jobs. You just kind of go out back and you get them and you take them to the job and you use them. In that case, you would leave this box unchecked and you can put in here uh, bolts. You can put in whatever description that you want to put in here. This description right here is going to show up on your invoices. All right, so we'll say bolts and then we'll say the price is, you know, I don't know, make up a, make up a price, $15. We'll say it's got tax. Uh, it's either going to be taxable, non-taxable, depending on where you are. And the account, the other important thing. So when we do charge for these, because if we are charging for them, we have to specify where that money is going to go. We're going to say that this is materials income. All right. So that when somebody pays us and we charge for these bolts, it's going to go on our profit and loss as materials income. Very, very important. You have to specify that account. Now let's say that instead of us just basically using these and charging for them, that we purchase these specifically for jobs. So we go out and we get a job. We don't go out and buy a bunch of them and use them. We go out and we say, hey, we know we're doing this deck job. We're going to need these certain amount of bolts and these you know, certain type of bolts. Uh, you're going to use this and say, we basically use this for specific jobs. All right. So in this case, description of purchase transactions, these are going to go on your purchase orders. If you do purchase orders in QuickBooks and we'll say the XYZ bolts and the cost, you can leave this blank and you can always put in the cost on the PO. Now, I recommend typically leaving it blank because prices change all the time. If you put it in here, it, it's going to populate on your purchase order at this price every time, which is fine. But, you know, why not just leave it at zero then? So we'll leave it at zero. And the expense account, again, this is something very important. You, you have to specify when we buy this, this is going to this expense account. We're going to say this is job materials because it is ex, a job expense. And we don't have a preferred vendor, but of course you can put a preferred vendor in there. Now the sales price, again, we've got bolts, we've got $15. And just like on the purchase transactions, you can leave this sales price blank, leave it at zero. And when it comes up on an invoice, you can always change it to whatever you need it to be. All right, so we've got this in here, we got the purchase, we're gonna say okay. All right, so now you can see we have bolts in our item list as a non-inventory part. So let's take a look at what this does. If we're going to go up and we're going to say customers, we're going to create an invoice. And again, this could be a sales receipt. doesn't have to be an invoice. And we'll say that Johnny Melton basement remodel. All right. So we got Johnny Melton date, invoice number, et cetera. Now let's go to our item drop down list and we'll scroll down and let's see. There's our bolts right there. So we say bolts. $15. So that rate automatically came up because of the non-inventory part. We're going to say that we had 20 of them. So it's $300 for the bolts. And of course, you may have some other things on here as well. Uh, you know, installation. And we'll say that this is, you know, 100 hours, $35 an hour, $3,500. And it's going to add up. You see the tax here that it's charging on the bolts because we put that in the non-inventory part setup. Okay, so that's the basics on setting up a non-inventory part and the importance of using non-inventory parts in addition to service items, inventory items, if you have inventory and all these other items, you wanna get these things set up in QuickBooks as you go. Any comments, any questions, please feel free to leave those below. Also, head over to the QuickBooks University. That website again is qbuniversity.org.